Hey, Will. <laughs> pretty, pretty lame room you got here, dude. <laughs> You're such a square. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I am Third Mario Brother, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Heart Gold. In the last episode, we took on the first Elite Four member of the region, Will, the Psychic type trainer. And today, of course, we're going to be continuing on to the second Elite Four member. So, if you guys are excited to continue the Elite Four conquest that we have going on here, please make sure to leave a like on the video down below. With that, of course, I healed up off screen, and Hot Dog is going to be taking the front of our party right now because I trust Hot Dog, and the strongest, highest level member of our team, actually, right now, is going to tear up the next. Next Elite Four member, which looks very familiar to me. <laughs> I am Koga of the Elite Four. I live in shadows. A ninja! My intricate style will confound and destroy you! Confusion, sleep, poison. Prepare to be the victim of my sinister techniques! <laughs> Pokemon are not merely about brute force. You shall see soon enough! And yes, we are facing off against Elite Four Koga, who was once a gym leader in the Kanto region, but has since upgraded to an Elite Four member here at the Indigo Plateau. And he s swoops in like some sort of Naruto character and starts with an Ariados, which is very intimidating to me because I do believe it has some sort of like sticky web or spore or something that could take out the rest of our team or at least um hinder our performance so we're gonna lead this off should we do a flare blitz yeah screw it why not let's go ahead and lead off with a flare blitz because we have not yet shown this technique off and man that thing looks powerful and it's going to take this ariados out absolutely no problem it's also going to do a heck of a lot of damage to us Ooh, 39 hp to ourselves in one hit but hey we took the thing out with no problem whatsoever so koga is now going to send in a fortress I have no idea why you would send in another Pokemon four times weak to fire against Hot Dog, but this time I think Flamethrower should do it, because this thing is very, very physically defensive, but not quite especially defensive, and a four times Flamethrower should take this thing out no problem. Yup, down goes the Fortress, and wow, Hot Dog, you are too strong. I feel like you might be a little overleveled. I did want the Flare Blitz before we went to the Elite Four, but man, this thing is looking powerful. And here comes Muck. Finally, something that Hot Dog can't just tear through without even giving it a, uh, two thoughts. <laughs> but Muck is a poison type Pokemon. I believe it's a little bit physically offensive, maybe? And then specially defensive, kind of. But that does not worry me one bit because we have the Scrambler here with extra sensory to take out this dumb pile of guck. I never got why Psychic is super effective against poison. That doesn't make sense to me. I get how it's uh, super effective against fighting because it's like, oh, Psychic, you use your brain. Fighting, you don't use your brain. <laughs> Which is actually like, like not true at all, but Muck is going to, what's he gonna do? Oh, he has Black Sludge? Oh, Muck, that is just dirty. Like, literally, it's dirty. But, um, let's go ahead and yawn this thing, because I don't want it to be able to use a whole bunch of, um, minimizes. So, let's yawn it, we'll put it to sleep next turn, and we will get going on this thing. And he's gonna restore HP every single turn with that Black Sludge, which is gonna be really annoying. But that's okay, we've got time, we've got eggs, we've got the Scrambler on deck. Now, Muck is going to use Toxic, which is really, really unfortunate for us, actually. Ah, especially since this thing has a Minimize up. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so annoying. At least it's going to go to sleep this turn, so it can't hit anything else. I'm really upset that it hit that Toxic, though, because now the Scrambler is going to die pretty quickly if we don't do something about this. So... You stay fast asleep, Muck. You better stay fast asleep. Jeez. And let's, let's extra sensory this thing until it goes down. I do kind of wish we had, like, Earthquake or something to do a little bit faster damage to this thing. But, uh, you know what? You can't win them all. And I do want to teach Earthquake to uh, Noodle later on. So we can't really have it on Gatorade right now, you know? Can't have your cake and eat it too and eat somebody else's cake also. But Scrambler, come on, man. You're not, you're not being a team player right now. You're missing extra sensories left and right. You're getting hit by Toxics. Man, you're not bobbing, you're not weaving, you're not hitting these attacks. Come on, Scrambler. I know it's been a while since I've used you, at least on screen, but you don't need to keep missing these attacks, man. Jeez. All right. I think it might actually be a better idea to switch out to something else and uh, maybe take this thing out with Gatorade because Scrambler is just not doing the trick right now. Um, the specially defensive Muck is not so physically defensive, so let's just go ahead and hit this thing with a couple waterfalls, I suppose. That is going to be the uh, strategy that I use. And luckily, it's still asleep. Dang. Muck's actually pretty fast for a big, uh, disgusting pile of sludge. It was outspeeding the Scrambler there, as you guys saw. Not that the Scrambler is the fastest Pokemon in the world, but let's get some damage off on this thing. Hit it with a waterfall, and how much is that going to do? 
it will do just about as much as the uh, extra sensory of the Scrambler was doing before, which I can live with, I can live with that. That much damage every turn, you know what? I'll take it, especially since we don't, uh, well, I guess we're probably going to be missing just as much because Extra Sentry is 100 accuracy and Waterfall is 100 accuracy, so this doesn't really do any benefit for us. But Gatorade ain't missing anything. Gatorade came to play. The Scrambler's still waking up, coming out of a shell, you know. So it's going to take some time for uh, the Scrambler, his little booty over there, to warm up. Instead, In the meantime, though, we have a Venomoth, which we're going to send out Hot Dog against. Of course, because the bug type that it is, it is not going to be able to take one single burp from Hot Dog. We're going to burp in this thing's face, and it's just going to go straight down to the ground. And Venomoth is a really cool Pokemon. Um, moths in real life are, like, disgusting and gross, and I hate them. Um, I'm, not that I'm, like, scared of them. They're just, like, annoying, because they always fly in your face and stuff, and, like... That's, the, like, a one-way ticket to die. Like, moths are the stupidest creatures in the world. But Venomoth has a cool design. I always liked it. A couple of episodes of anime, it was, like, really cool. I guess at Koga's Gym it was, or something like that. But, hey, Noodle's gonna grow up a level. That's awesome. And we are going to go up against a Crobat next. Uh, against which, I guess we'll throw in Lamb Chop one more time. Lamb Chop has been putting in work this entire series, man. Ampharos is such a good Pokemon. Not only that, but our Lamb Chop in particular is a team player and one that will not let go. One Pokemon left. Ha ha ha! I've been counting on this one from the very beginning! That's a terrible strategy. Um... Oh gosh, but it has double team. This actually could be fairly threatening. If it has something that can take Lamb Chop out really easily, or like a Toxic or something, and we keep missing Thunderbolts, but we're not going to, because Lamb Chop also came to play. Hit that thing with a Thunderbolt, and I don't know if this will take it out, but it will take it down very low. Yes, one hit against the Crobat, and that thing is gone. Lamb Chop, I love you, baby. And Noodle's gonna gain some more experience, so is Lamb Chop, and there goes Elite Four Koga. A lot easier than I expected. Ah, you have proven your worth. Let me teach you the ultimate ninja upside down Pokemon butter my biscuits jutsu. I have subjected you to everything I could muster. I love mustard, but my efforts failed. I must hone my skills. Go on to the next room and put your abilities to the test. I'll sit here and cry because you beat me so badly. But that was Elite Four Koga, and he said something at the beginning of the video about, like, uh, being a ninja that hides in the shadows, but now that I look at his position in the room, he's really just kind of standing there in the middle of a spotlight, which is not very ninja-esque of you, Koga, I gotta say, but let's go ahead and use this Moo Moo Milk that I bought with my extra athlete points at the, uh, Pokeathlon Dome on the Scrambler to heal her, him, him up, and, um, uh, what else should we use? I guess we have a lot of max potions and hyper potions. I'll go ahead and use a hyper potion on... No, you know what? Actually, I think Hot Dog is fine, because Hot Dog is a force to be reckoned with. But, there goes Koga. You're gonna say the exact same thing. And you know what? What's the point of a cape if you're a ninja? I feel like that just makes you louder, man. You ain't no ninja. You're just a cosplayer, dude, trying to dress up like uh, Kakashi-sensei. Get the heck out of my face, man. We beat your butt, and what do you think? Hot Dog nodded slowly. Ah, yeah, Hot Dog is, like, the team leader right now, being level 48 with that Flare Blitz. This thing could take pretty much anything in the Elite Four out by itself, I'm sure. But with that, we defeated Elite Four Koga in this episode. If you enjoyed the battle, please make sure to leave a like in the video down below. And next time, of course, we will be heading toward the third Elite Four member, which is... Ooh, very daunting indeed. <laughs> Bruno is waiting for us next time. So, thank you all very much once again for watching, and next time we'll be taking on Bruno, so I will see you guys then.